Greetings, gentle viewers! Howdy, howdy! Last time, we established the baseline information for this case. We know what the scene is, and we know that there's funny things that happened in it, and we know we have no idea what happened, but have some ideas on how things could have happened. And we know that the prosecutor is a jerk face, but we may have already known that before. Or at the very least, he's lying to himself. So, and this is no award-winning segue, we're the Bittersweet Gamers! I'm Wee Square! I'm the Opinionator! It and should be an award-winning segue, only because of my unramped ego. <laughs> anyway, now we're off to... Ah, uh, we kind of stopped at a transition! We don't know where it's going next. If we knew where it was going next, this wouldn't be blind. But we do know there's still stuff we have to do. We have to talk to Dirk and go to Dirk's office in the sewers. I... what do you want from me? Shakespeare. All right, let's see here. <laughs> Meantime, we shall express our darker purpose. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, while we unburdened crawl toward death. Our son of... Yes? You've been practicing your R rolling. I'm so proud. Yeah, I'm still no good at it, though. The princes, <laughs> France and Burgundy, great rivals and our youngest daughters. Okay, I'm going to stop this now. <laughs> King Lear is pretty awesome. Are you done? Are you done? We're playing this game now. Sorry. Maya passed out right after we found her in the tomb. Ah, so now we're playing Phoenix. <laughs> I feel exhausted. I can't keep my eyes open. <clears throat> She's been out cold ever since. We haven't been able to get a word out of her. The doctor said it's just exhaustion, but I can't help but worry. What is it, right? Are you all right? Yes, I am all right. <laughs> Don't you ever start this garbage with me. Okay, Edgeworth. Yeah. Just thinking is all. I'm glad you're here, Edgeworth. We wouldn't have gotten the permissions we have without you. <laughs> connections. Well, I didn't come all the way to Kurain to be useless. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the investigation, I received a few things from Detective Sky. These should prove to be useful to us as well. Oh! We're gonna have to pass this off to Apollo later on. Man, we, we have to like keep track of different people's court record stuff. <laughs> How is this gonna work? But this is one of the interesting parts about having a giant cast and them all seeming to be active. We're gonna tag team. I can't thank you enough, Edgeworth. Honestly, I'd have been so lost without him these past few days. You there, the bird-headed lawyer, Phoenix Wright! Oh god, we really are going to be doing this again. What? Guard B! <laughs> You're from the Grand Royal Guard, right? Huh! I am lucky! <laughs> <laughs> Royal Guard member and her eminence's shoulder ah! Oh my heart! It's dying! That, that's very specific. It's sort of interesting how that is a very Chinese GN he's holding there, isn't it? The sword? Well, you know, we're in Indna? Indo China Tibetapan. Yes! And what does the royal shoulder rubber want with me? Wait, come to think of it, my shoulders are a bit stiff. Don't <laughs> I am here for one purpose only. I am to bring you before her evidence. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Queen Gran, Grand Priestess of Crime. Are you a guard or a motorboat? <laughs> Will you comply? The queen? What could she want with me? Second time they'll have met, I guess. And why does he have to shout like that and roll his R's like that? Hmm. 
I can't fathom why Queen Garan would summon you. But I advise you to accept Her Eminence's gracious invitation. Royal Shoulder Rubber Lackey, was it? <laughs> May I join Mr. Wright in his audience with the Queen? The name of the Lackey, L A apostrophe K E, and yeah, that'd be fine. I mean, all praise the omnipotent Queen Garan. You, you, for she you has spelled already your own name wrong and approved your request, Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth. You are both to come with me! That, okay, a second ago it sounded like a purring cat that opened its mouth slightly. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just saying. You mean to say Queen Garan sees our every move? Yes, indeed! Her reminiscence's spiritual power is immense! No, you can't quite roll your E's or Y's there, buddy. Uh, uh, meh, I'm not. No, no, I can't. She can even see what's going on thousands of miles away! Without the R's, it's just not fun. Hmm. Right. I fear I'll lose my hearing next if we don't hurry. <laughs> I'm already losing my sanity listening to this. Yeah, me too. Why would the queen herself summon me personally? What could she possibly be up to? All right, you know what it's time to do. Hey, Edgeworth, did you know that I am a defense attorney? Still at it, I see. I guess borders mean little in the face of your incurable habit. Well, I heard you used to present evidence left and right during your investigations, too! Yeah, I know about those games you were in. Hmm. That was a long time ago. Besides, who did you hear that from? Francesca. Oh, I have my sources. Ah. Uh, well, tell your source that I look forward to his next salary review. I'm so sorry, Gumshoe. Like, I know that the Queen summoned us and everything, but I'm just gonna take a quick peek around. There weren't any hotels available, so this is our home for tonight. I suppose it will do. It's a bed to sleep in and a roof over our heads. Sorry to disappoint, but there aren't any beds here. Yeah. We'll have to sleep on the floor next to a bunch of strangers. What? what? Tell me there's a shower at the very least. You, you can take a bath in the pool, I guess. Not in this pool! It has religious significance and is said to lead to your death! Oh, that's a good point. The kitchen sink works just fine, I hear. Right! Of all the... Right! You will work to bring this case to a swift resolution. The sooner, the better. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. The water's so clear, it's like a window into the soul. I wouldn't stare too hard into it, right? Or you may find all your bluffs staring right back at you. All the guilt of all those years of being a lawyer. No pool gazing in front of a client. Got it. There appears to be many temples in this area. Yeah, there are always a lot of monks and worshippers praying around here. Uh, it's kind of their national pastime. And then there's tourists like us. It's unfortunate that we have more pressing matters to attend to. Then again, sightseeing with you, of all people, isn't exactly at the top of my list. As if you have the luxury to be so picky, Edgeworth. Well, if he were running around sightseeing with uh, Kay from the Investigations games, then he'd be the one getting harassed instead of the one doing the harassing. <laughs> oh! Cutscene! Ah, oh, the barbed head lawyer has arrived. We bid you welcome. And you as well, Chief Prosecutor Edgeworth. What, no snappy nickname for him? Well, the snappy nickname was from her daughter. I know. <laughs> Thank you. It's really just the facial markings. Mm -hmm. There's really no, no reason for me to think this, but I just keep thinking of Damon Gant from the first game when I look at her face because they kind of look like lightning bolts, you know? Yeah. Also, I, Damon, may have found Damon Gant to be a pretty interesting person. <laughs> I wonder what the connection is. 
pa this place is as Well, it is a palace. This line is still as magnificent. This place is still as magnificent as last time. We have heard much about you, Barbed One. Ooh, that makes me sound all special. I am the Barbed One. <laughs> it seems your bluffs and tomfoolery tend to leave our court devastated in their wake. Maybe if your prosecutors weren't so vulnerable to them, huh? You ever think of that? I shouldn't talk the leader. Uh, is that what people have been saying about me? Yes, kindly don't, kindly don't <laughs> mock the queen in the throne room. Fight! <laughs> Where are your manners? Do not mock the queen! Your eminence, I am both humbled and delighted to be in your presence. Oh, um, your eminence, glad to be here. Looks like you're doing well? <laughs> it is all right. There is no need to keep your head bowed all day. Yes, your eminence. Wow, she's calm for once. You know, I actually really, really missed her. I wasn't sure what her role was going to be at first, where she came off really dislikable. Mm -hmm. I kind of really like her. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I actually have come to really like her, even though we haven't seen her in a while. Rayfod's not looking too good. Yeah! Guess even she can't just bounce back from her father's murder. Yesterday! Yesterday! I hope she doesn't have to do this divination seance. That's, uh, she does have to. That oh, is her couldn't position. Couldn't do it? I suppose so, but that is not her role. Part of it is that you have to, you know, it's kind of a noblesse oblige thing. This is the responsibility of your position, of your family, of your name. It is your role and you must. But how cruel, just how cruel. Oh, you mean like forcing the prosecutor to prosecute against his own father? This is dad, attorney, spirit of father. <laughs> or parents in any case. Literally everything has to do with parents across the board. So what can I do for you, your eminence? Right. We wish to question you about something related to the case at hand. Perfect, because I have a few questions of my own. First off, did you know that, that I, I am a lawyer? <laughs> um, please take a look at this. Right! That reminds us of when Dirk was still practicing law. So... We see that lawyers in your country also present evidence. I'm sorry, it's a nervous habit I've developed. Simply to gauge the other party's reaction when all else has failed. Do not presume to use such simplistic methods upon us. I, I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know you want to talk to me, but I just want to take a look around and... Right! Hey <laughs> it's the Ron Royal Guard. Which one of them is Lackey? The one who came for us earlier said that he's the royal shoulder rubber. Um, excuse me. But are each of you charged with your own specific task? I'm the royal tea server! I'm the royal bed maker! I'm the royal taster! All right, all right, I'm sorry I asked. Okay, what was that? The royal... Taster. The royal fitness trainer! Okay. <laughs> At this rate, one has to wonder if there's no task left unassigned by Her Eminence. And I'm the Royal Assassin! I mean... Pardon? That's one swanky throw. <laughs> what a way to say it. I am still standing right here. I wouldn't mind taking a seat there myself. The Jester and the Crown. I imagine it'd make quite the interesting picture. You know, Edgeworth... I hate to say this, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> okay, I guess I better get back to the queen. We fear we do not fully comprehend what has transpired. Join the club! So it is that we summon you here to further elucidate the situation. Is it true that our husband Inga had been seeking the Founder's Orb? That's right. He wanted to trade a hostage for it. That's why he abducted Maya Faye. <laughs> Insolent fool! Ow! I love that clonk. That is a lie! A lie, I say! Father would never have done such a thing. 
Your own soldiers found him in there with her tied up. Dirk didn't kidnap by a fae from across the country. Tie her up in there. I'm just I'm dead. But, but he did abduct Maya. That much is... I will not stand here and listen to this nonsense. You will pay for this. You... You... Ugh. Ow! Ow! Jesus! Ow! Ow! ow, ow. P -p Please, your benevolence! It's like the little whirly arm. Clonk, 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 clonk. That is quite enough, Rafa. We understand your feelings. But we fear he speaks the truth. For we believe we know why your father would do such a thing. What? We believe he was seeking the orb as a means of obtaining spiritual power. And with it, he intended to usurp the throne. M mother What do you mean, your eminence? Ingo was planning a coup, for he was dissatisfied with the current administration. Why? He held so much power! Well, being number two meant that he really wanted to be number one. <sighs> it's like... I don't know when about I, that. When I was in retail, at a point of being the assistant manager, I started to get really hungry. I'm not saying that I... I mean, I certainly didn't plot a coup, but I, <laughs> I'm not justifying Inga. Like, that's ridiculous. But, I mean, I kind of understand, like, that, yes, you have this much power, but there's power you don't have. Look, <sighs> all assistant managers, they're all hungry for your blood. I'm Those just saying. oil vizirs. And his secret police was the primary instrument of his treason. The secret police. They came up during the high priest murder trial, too. An elite force under the direct command of the Minister of Justice. In this case, Inga. The man who was hunting down rebels as Lady Kira was a member of that group. Indeed, Inga turned that once proud force into his own private army. And he intended on using them to launch a coup and assassinate us. Good lord! So your eminence had no control over them? As much as it shames us to admit it, Kurain is not the unified realm it would appear to be. We are truly sorry you have had to witness the dirty underbelly of our kingdom. Your eminence... I have witnessed many a dirty underbelly, and I'm not trying to make some kind of weird euphemism out of that. Eyebrow raise. <laughs> How could father... But know that Inga could not have become king simply through our assassination. I mean, he'd have to overcome the tradition, you yeah, know? You Only can't... a descendant of the Holy Mother could be the ruler? Yeah, just because you happen to be the father of the descendant... Besi uh, yeah. Maybe he maybe he wanted to put Rafa up and control her through the shadows. I mean, that actually sounds more plausible than doing it himself. That but... way, he'd still have power, but he'd be like in the shadows. However, that didn't appear to be what he wanted to do. Mm. I mean, if he did get that spiritual power directly from the Holy Mother, does it matter at that point? The Holy Mother chose him. You could argue. I suppose. Okay, I suppose he could spin it like that. Yeah, that makes sense. For in Kurain, only those who possess spiritual power may sit on the throne. Yeah, we were just talking about that. We were not listening. I see. That explains why Minister Inga was seeking the Founder's Orb. Bob, do you recall the man known as Peace, Love, and Understanding? Yes. Yes, I do. What about him? He, too, was involved in Inga's machinations. Inga had bought his loyalty, ordered the man to steal the orb, and covered up the theft. And then he sent the orb to the U.S. for Dr. Buff to study. It's all coming together. The capture of the infamous villain Dirk Sadmadi. It may prove to be the crowning achievement of our reign. Now, perhaps the kingdom may return to the peace at once new. This is really complicated, you know? This is really complicated. And sure enough, Phoenix is the person who's got such deep connections to the rebels and to the royal family. You're right! He doesn't ha it's not that he has a lot of connections to the royal family, but more than everyone else. Yeah, especially Apollo. 
it's like you can kind of see everybody's point, except for Inga's, but... <laughs> I'm sure once we get to the bottom of that, that will open up a lot in, in, in terms of this trial. How fortuitous that Inga specifically wanted Dirk to come so that Dirk could also get captured. That There is no way that that's a coincidence, because after all, if he had Dirk and the spiritual power... You know, what a person, he's, he's brought peace to the kingdom, ended... And captured the, the evil Dirk. Ended the rebellion. So and he go to nipple pitching hell. And chosen by the Holy Mother. I mean, there's something to be said for that. You can make a case like that. But getting rid of Dirk won't stop the rebellion. Right. There's, uh, belief. Yeah, there, there is this rebellion. It exists because... Because of the unfair way they're running things. Right, and if you martyr the leader, what do you think is going to happen? That generally doesn't turn out that well. No, it doesn't. Oh, what a joyous day. Hail to our immense Queen Gran, Grand Priestess of Crane! We're the official clappers. Her remnants of spiritual power invoked a blessing straight from the Holy Mother! I could see how her cronies would be elated at the prospect. But the queen herself seems almost giddy for someone whose husband was just murdered. I mean, Rafa's reaction makes perfect sense. She is the queen, however, but she's also a pride suspect. Yeah, yeah. We have no evidence of this, but... Look, Inga can only do so much in his position. That's why he wanted more power. The root of this must come from the queen. It just might. Father. Rafa, on the other hand, doesn't appear to be taking it so well. Poor kid. About that incident that occurred 23 years ago. The one in which Dirk was accused of assassinating Queen Amara? Yes. He set fire to a private residence, burning my dear sister alive. Murdered by arson. Thank you! Where have I heard that before? Of course, he wasn't there to hear the stuff from Apollo. That's true. Only a demon would be capable of such a heinous crime. But that event also set the stage for you to become queen. What did you do before you were crowned queen, your eminence? As part of our training to be queen, we served in many different governmental positions. The longest of which was as the previous Minister of Justice. Did you wear the cuffs? How fascinating! Yeah! It was in that position that we were best able to support our elder sister, Queen Amara. It's just like that whole Grand Vizier thing. <laughs> the second in command is always hungry for more. <laughs> Interesting. That's her husband's position, or at least it was. And when you ascended to the throne, you passed the Defense Culpability Act. Against her sister's so-called killer. Those who would support criminals will be deemed just as guilty. What prompted you to pass something like the Defense Culpability Act, your eminence? The assassination of our dear sister, Amara. What is justice compared to my personal feelings? <laughs> when the infamous villain Dirk Saad Mahdi was apprehended, he announced that he would act as his own lawyer. And weren't you surprised when he cleared himself? That's right. Dirk used to be a lawyer. Dirk had been an extraordinarily talented lawyer and highly esteemed by the people. But he falsified evidence in an attempt to win his own case. I see. I bet Phoenix really gets upset when people talk to him about this sort of thing. Probably, yeah. But when the truth of his fabrications and the assassination of the Queen came to light, the people were devastated. And how much of this is actually true? Someone like Tarus was a rebel. How much of what she's saying is just propaganda? Like someone whose faith was so deep, but he... Supported dirt. He recognized 
how it was horribly wrong and unjust. It's not that he wasn't a devout Kurianist. It's not that he had a problem with the institution of the monarchy. It's that he had a problem with the miscarriage of justice. Yeah, Kurianism's teachings are not what are at fault here. What's at fault is the DC Act. Right. That is the root of all of this. And whatever high-level corruption is in the background of all of this. Yeah, so it's it's like you could be a highly devout Koreanist and still be a rebel because they're not they're not they don't contradict each other. Well, almost everybody in Kurayin is a is a, a highly devout Koreanist, so that means necessarily all the rebels are. Yeah. And trust in the legal system plummeted. Ah. Uh -huh. Hmm. No, why does that sound so familiar? Edgeworth, not now. I was the one who cleaned all of that up, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> Seriously, thank you so much. Dark Age of the Law et al. In Kurain, the Hall of Justice is a sacred space where victims receive their last rites. Should the people lose their faith in it, the kingdom would be shaken to its very core. That is why the Defense Culpability Act had to be passed. It was the only way to keep our legal system from tumbling into the abyss. Uh-huh. So that's how you sought to eliminate the use of perjury and phony evidence, huh? But that law is what made lawyers go extinct in your kingdom. I, I do have to say, making something more illegaler doesn't solve the problem. <laughs> like, perjury and falsified evidence were already illegal. Right? Now there's no one left to defend those who have been accused. Don't you think that's a problem? We see how you could take issue with such a reality. I almost died twice, after all. However, we have not banned the act of lawyering itself. It's not really against the law. We just make it as unappealing as possible on purpose. Those who are confident that they can prove their client's innocence are always welcome to mount a vigorous defense, as you yourself have shown. And, Mr. Wright, how many penalties have you paid? Why, none. Well, I guess so, but... Without lawyers, there's the possibility of false charges being filed and prosecuted! So long as our prosecutors continue to run nothing but perfect trials, there needn't be fear of such nefarious dealings. Do you disagree? I do, because I proved one wrong twice! I... Completely agreed! Ooh. This argument is garbage! Perfect prosecutors and their perfect trials, huh? What do you think about that, Edgeworth? Oh, thank you! Let's not get started <laughs> down this path. Furthermore, here in Kurain, we have the divination seance. Which I have proven to be misinterpreted on multiple occasions. And the person who suffers because of that is the one doing it, Rafa, whose heart is totally in the right place. And because... It's because shattered her confidence. Her confidence, her, her, her faith... Ah, uh, she's just like, my divination seances have never been challenged, and so my interpretation of them is always correct. Yes, right? And then she finds out that she's been doing... And it can be fake, just like any other kind of evidence. And it's just that shattered her because she wants to do the right thing. And it, like I've said before, the person suffering the most from all the shenanigans of Garan and Inga is Rafa. And so it is. We no longer need lawyers. For the dead, do not lie. OBJECTION! To Rusk specifically fabricated a false situation knowing about the divination seance. And he was dead, by the way! <laughs> so there, and when we channeled him, he lied. So you are full of it. Blow it out your... Right, that is enough. <laughs> that is mouth. enough, right? Well, in the short time I've been here, I've beaten back false charges twice. And I found that cases built on the memories of the dead are less than perfect. So yes, I do take issue with the Defense Culpability Act, to say the least. 
<laughs> oh, <new> animation. <laughs> Such relentless rhetoric. Your reputation precedes you, barbed one. Oh! <laughs> it feels as if we ourselves were being cross-examined. You might get your chance. Oh, oh, no, that that wasn't my intention. Please don't have me arrested for lay majesté. Yeah, les majesté is, is what it would be. It is true that some feel that the Defense Culpability Act is a necessary evil at best. But it is a small sacrifice upon which the peace of our kingdom has been forged. Mm, yes, all these... Rebel attacks and rebel activity. So peaceful. So peaceful. Coming from both the rebellion and from Inga's secret police. If you consider executing innocent lawyers as a small sacrifice, then sure. The fact is that following its passage... Oh, you better not be like, our prosecution success rate has gone up 200%. Yeah, like, obviously it would! The crime rate here in Kurain dropped markedly. I can see that, except for all the rebels! Therefore, we have no regrets concerning the enactment of the Defense Culpability Act. Do you have any regrets at all? Really? None at all? Right. Why don't we leave it at that? This isn't a court of law, after all, and at least, as for now, we are not litigating the system itself. Kabot, 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 kabot. Yeah. You're lucky right Edgeworth is here to hold me back. About the Founder's Orb that was to be exchanged for the hostage. It went missing after the murder. Would you happen to know anything about that? I actually do not. Why are you crossing your fingers and holding them behind your back? Ah, uh, Japanifornia tradition? It's missing? I'm sure Dirk had it when he went into the tomb. Maybe it's hidden in the tomb somewhere. Totally not with my protege. If it wasn't there, I have no idea where it could be, Your Eminence. <laughs> you should see the, <laughs> the crap-eating grin on Billy's face. In that case, then perhaps Dirk has hidden it somewhere. Incidentally, there is the matter of that horned youth you were with. You know, we have names. I mean... You must mean Apollo. Yes, that one. From his odd hairstyle, may we assume <laughs> him to be a relative? Perhaps your younger brother? Your, your eminence? That, that's not how hereditary stuff works. I mean... You that's... have no right to say anything. Look at the names of the people in your own kingdom. <laughs> no, no, you've got it all wrong. He's... I shouldn't be saying this. Dirk's son. Well... More, more like foster sons. They're not actually related by blood, even though they do have a striking resemblance to each other. Dirks. Royal Guard. Uh-oh. Your eminence! Why is it always you? Are your shoulders tired? Well, yes, but... Hmm? What's she whispering into that one guy's ear? Go find him and kill him. <laughs> Thank you for your time. The two of you may go now. Uh, actually, I had some concerns. Yes, your eminence. We'll be on our way. Okay. Now what? Apollo and Athena have the murder scene investigation covered, so... Maybe we should go speak with the locals over at the bazaar. What? Four. All right, I'm out, Steve. Good riddance. I kind of want one of these Kurain hats. <laughs> oh, oh. What the heck is that? What, what, was that a lion? Oh, that caught me by surprise, too, when I first heard it. It's the cry of a local bird known as a warbod. What? That's what they sound like? 
That is one messed up bird. A bird. That sounds like that. <laughs> yeah, see, there it goes again. Sounds more like a beast than a bird, if you ask me. What does it do? Hunt small game by yelling at it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a form of mimicry. You know, to help protect them against predators and stuff. Yes, well, can't say I've heard one quite like that before. Although that does kind of mean it would have had to have heard that from somewhere nearby. Oh, it's more than unusual. It's endangered. Where would it learn that? Take it to a zoo, I guess. It's extremely rare to encounter one in the wild these days. Hmm. If it's so rare, then what's one doing out here in the middle of the bazaar? You got me. Maybe it's got something to do with it being their national bird? I I've seen... Ah! Ah! Well, was that a gunshot? I was going to say, I've seen people bring in spider monkeys into places around town in Oklahoma. <laughs> you never really know if somebody wants to have Maybe it's someone's service war bod. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no. Star me a PW! Yes, when you fire guns at me, you crazy man! <laughs> what was that, Dots? By the way, if you call me... M-E, I will hurt you. <laughs> Dog style! Moro, ore no Kuzumo! The Defiant Dragon's newest weapon! I call these puppies Dragon Snot Snaps! Dots, could you maybe not announce that you're a Defiant Dragon? In the is, middle of a busy street. Is he saying that he is snapping his fingers like a gunshot? Wow, oh, that would be pretty good. You're like a battle manga character or a pistol shrimp. <laughs> uh, uh huh. And you need those. Why? For the same reason the war bot roars! Mimicry! What? Because our hard work is starting to pay off! Yes, your leader has been arrested. Thanks to our TV signal hijacking and stuff, more and more people are joining our cause. Oh, I... We're getting popular, attracting the young folks due to fads with their smartphones <laughs> and emojis. But on account of that, the regime's been cracking down on us real tough-like. That's why I yelled about being a defiant dragon and fired off the dragon shot snap in the middle of the bazaar. Y yeah, there's been a lot going on lately. If something happens to Dirk, I'll be the leader of the Defiant Dragons. Doesn't that make you feel <laughs> great? <laughs> I need to examine if you've been shot. <laughs> you can say that again. I mean, well, with a high priest, fake murder slash suicide. I need to bring you up to date on stuff. People are calling it the DCA tragedy, and it's causing a real public uproar. Hopefully this means trust death won't be in vain after all. Agreed, agreed. So how exactly is a handful of firecrackers going to be of help to you guys anyway? Are they those like little poppers that you throw on the sidewalk and it makes a loud pop because of the impact? Must be. Too bad. I like the idea of, of him. snapping so hard it creates the gunshot yeah. sound effect. Yeah, or of him just doing like Pegasus View Satan <laughs> and then snapping really loudly. <laughs> Simple. First, I supply them to our fellow fe Rellos. Is that, is that so? Fellow Rebels. Then, we use them as a diversion when we need to shake Garan's goons. What? Like this. Ah. Will you cut that out? See, it distracted you. <laughs> it was a diversion. It works just like I said. <laughs> I'm not with the regime, and I'm not chasing you, so that proved nothing. <laughs> Your reaction! That was priceless, PW! <laughs> Guess I startled the warp on too! That's also a distraction! <laughs> Edgeworth, meet the Kurian Larry. I want to kill myself. It's a miracle no one's trying to arrest him while he's too busy laughing! You there.
You are one of those insurgents, are you not? Uh, in mm. fact, haven't you even appeared in court before? What? Didn't you even retreat? Ah! Take that! <laughs> oh, I, I guess it worked. And he's gone. Those firecrackers are more useful than I thought. I told you they weren't. They weren't on you. They weren't on the war bond. <laughs> Congratulations. You scared a small child. Bob Ted, who are you calling a small child? Your benevolence, uh, what can I do for you? More importantly, I... I wanted to speak with you. About what my mother said. I do not believe a word of it. My father could not have been planning a coup. I kind of also don't believe her, but not necessarily because of that. What if Rafa's right? All I mean is... You know, what this game has been marked by is a child believing in their parents. Generally, yeah. generally fathers, but in, in, in Army's case, also her mother. Yeah, yeah. So isn't Rafa doing the same thing? In fact, I mean, what about Terust? Wasn't Terust and Believe also kind of the same thing? I mean, it was an unborn child to be sure, but that was a detail to, to keep the parent thing going. Like, yeah. why shouldn't why shouldn't Rafa too want to believe in her father? Oh, I've never once even said it's wrong for her to believe in her in her father or anything. I just think it's interesting. And that... I suppose it's possible. I'd be really surprised if this was the case. Inga seemed like such an awful guy. That could have just been his personality. He might have been an okay person. Or at the very least, an, a great father. Yeah. I mean, no one is cartoonishly good or cartoonishly bad. Yeah, like he might have been a villain or a minor villain. Maybe maybe he was a, a corrupt villain, but not a corrupt villain who was trying to do a coup, but he did love his daughter like, and was a good, good father to her. Criminals have families too, you know. It's just, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, I can understand why you'd feel like that, but... It was a setup. Someone must have been plotting against him. Um, and how do you know that? I just do, because the Holy Mother guides me. And as the royal priestess, I must uncover the truth for all to see. Hmm, maybe this is just how Rafa expresses her sense of duty. Which is everything to her, clearly. You're investigating this matter, are you not? You're gonna follow along, aren't you? Of course I am. Then rejoice, for I shall accompany you and bestow upon you the royal priestess's wisdom. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize. That's the best news I've heard all day, your benevolence. Uh, no one would dare get in our way with Rafa by our side. That is quite useful. We humbly accept your offer. Don't we, Edgeworth? I know you've got this thing against all the young women that follow me around, but... Well, I had that problem too, as you wish, right? Well, at least she's not a cat thief. A cat thief? Oh, is that not what Kay was? You mean a cat burglar? Burglar thief! When you yeah. say a cat thief, it sounds like you're talking about someone, someone who steals, steals cats. cats. Yeah, okay, you're good point, good point. Excellent. Then let us begin with my father's private quarters. Quite conveniently, I can get you there. Well! We should be able to find some clues there. Sweet! I shall expose this false charge for what it is. If it is the last thing I do, I'll need you to do that for me, barbed head. Could it be? Is the reason she's so defensive about Inga because she's a daddy's girl? Or because she's an, a normal girl who cares about her father? I... <laughs> barbed head, let us not waste any time. My father's private quarters are located within the royal residence. Now, follow me! I, I know how to get that if we've already... Wait! She's sure in a hurry. Right. The minister's private quarters may hold evidence related to his murder as well. Yeah. Maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Two war bods! Ah, 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 ah. Glare! Rayfa's awfully fired up. I just hope she'll be ready for the truth we find. After all, it's hard to believe that Inga was not in full control of the whole affair. Agreed. It would be fascinating if we were wrong, and this is Phoenix Wright. But first, as we always do... 
right. Why are you presenting your badge to the war bod? I'm not presenting anything to the war bot. I'm looking at it. I never thought the day would come when we'd be investigating a case side by side. Oh? Because I never thought the day would come when you'd get sentimental on me. Yes! <laughs> come on, right. Time's a wasting. Wait! Exactly which one of us was wasting time here? I guess it was me. Now, if we could figure out which of these buildings houses Inga's private quarters. Maybe it's that building to the right that houses Inga's private quarters? Nah. Because it is, in fact, his residence? That's where we'll find Rayfa. Shut up, Damon. I'm on Team Frog. <laughs> oh, I remember Frog versus Shisa statue. What a beautiful place this is. But I'd be enjoying this a whole lot more if we weren't investigating a murder. Commoners aren't normally allowed access to the royal residence, you know. Under ordinary circumstances, it would be impossible to take in such a spectacular view. Though murder is certainly a unique reason to be offered such a rare opportunity. I just wish my life didn't revolve around it. Come to think of it. There are footprints coming from this residence. Too bad they just kind of end. I wonder who made them and where they went. I like how we're given those this whole time. <laughs> right? This overturned urn spilled its water all over the place. Hence the footprints. It was already knocked over when we got here earlier this afternoon, so we can rule out Athena at least. This time. Thanks, Mr. Wright. Right. What does it say about you if your first suspect is your own subordinate? Pattern recognition. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wright. Now that's what I call an extravagant exterior. Is this where Inga's private quarters are? We kind of have to be by process of elimination. Watch your step, right? That urn's been knocked over, as we just discussed, spilling water everywhere. Yeah, the ground's soaked. I wonder who did this. Haven't we already been through this? <laughs> hmm? I think someone's in there. <laughs> Father. <laughs> What's that? Princess Rafa? <laughs> There were still so many things I wished to tell you. <sighs> she always puts on such a brave face. But hearing her crying all alone, I... I can't help but think of Trucy. <laughs> Father... <laughs> um, Princess Rafa, are you in there? Ah, just a moment, I'll be right out. I see you are finally here. Well, let us commence our investigation, shall we? Um, your benevolence? Maybe you should rest for a minute first. Uh, you were eavesdropping on me, weren't you? I wasn't dropping no eaves, ma'am. Uh, uh, no, I mean, yes. Sorry, I couldn't help overhearing. <laughs> It wasn't like I was spying on you or anything. You stupid, stupid, barbed head! Ow! Ouch! You could have feigned ignorance. It's as if your brain-to-mouth filter shuts off the moment you step out of the courtroom or see a teenage girl. Uh, I'm not that bad, Edgeworth. You could have feigned ignorance, too. When you see a teenage girl, is it Bob Ted? <laughs> now she's getting the wrong idea! Anyway, what took you so long? We were investigating this map. I thought you would never get here. It's like you were running around investigating every last detail and trying to present evidence to frogs. That frog could have seen something. You don't know. You have a lot of nerve keeping the crown princess waiting. Oh, um... Sorry? This was my father's residence. I've already unlocked it, so you can go right in. Oh, and be careful. 
some dingbat dog got in the courtyard and spilled water over there. A dingbat dog? It's kind of fun to say, isn't it? That's right. The yappy mutt spilled a whole urn's worth. What is up with the way she is talking about dogs? Dingbat dog and yappy, yappy mutt? mutt? That, maybe she's more of a cat person. Who knows? I mean, I like dogs, but I'm totally a cat person. I wonder how it got into this area. Do you know what it looked like? Hm. I have better things to do than memorize what some stray dog looks like. It might be important. Anyway, it's not worth talking about, except, I disagree. For, except for that it probably was. Let's search my father's room, shall we? Or maybe it's just a hand wave as to why it was knocked over to present the evidence. I really hope she's all right. <laughs> Oh my god. He had a bust of himself next to his own bed? Look at that cigar slash seal stamp thing. Oh god, look at the table. Hmm. What a mess. You can definitely tell a guy used to live in this room. <laughs> I guess Inga and I had at least that much in common. Look at the back of that chair that's shaped like his coat. He was his biggest fan. <laughs> The staff keeps getting in the way. It's like I'm going to knock something over. Nana! Oh, it's been a while since we've seen her. But, N Nana? Oh. But, what? Where's Nana? It was Nana! She's the one who did it! Normally, she just materializes out of the shadows like a ninja. She comes running whenever Rayfa calls. Hmm. Man, now she's even more alone. That's right. Nana is. Nana is what? Oh, well. You, Bob Ted, come, hold this staff for me. Oh, sure, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, oh, why me? Just take it. It's too heavy, and I'm tired of holding it. <sighs> How does Nana put up with this day in and day out? Maybe she just has a cold. I'll just set it over here for now. I mean, come on. Hey, Rafa, did you know that I am an attorney? Remove that vile badge from my sight. I refuse to look at it anymore. If you insist on tormenting me, I will take matters into my own hands. Right, give me that staff. I shall smite you about the head. Hey, don't bite it and don't hit me with the staff. Kabonk, 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 kabonk. Hmm, it's much harder than I thought. Well, it's not actually gold. What did you think it's made of? I just feel so bad presenting evidence of her father's murder. Well, give her the picture. <laughs> Edgeworth, why in God's name did I do this? Um, your benevolence? Don't look at me, right? Father. Oh, uh, this is sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you like that. Thanks, Damon. <laughs> Do not underestimate me. I am the royal priestess, and as such, I will experience my father's death tomorrow. Oh. So hand it over. A photo of a corpse. Well, not face. Your benevolence. Right, you fool. Put that picture away. <laughs> Damon told me to. <laughs> There's no need to worry. I simply lost my footing, that's all. Now I'm really worried about tomorrow. Thanks, Damon! Now I feel like a cad! Man, you've been thanking me a lot! Your benevolence, I wanted to ask you about this. This is the generic evidence response. Nana? Nana? Where are you? Um, I thought you said she wasn't around. Oh, yes, of, of course. Well, you're sadly mistaken if you think questioning Nana will clear things up. But I'm trying to question you, not Nana. Hm. There's something, I don't know, I mean, there, there's something really appealing about that type of pride. What do you mean? I, 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 just, I just like that is all. I mean, it's easy to understand how to actually take what she's saying. Ah, that's what you meant. Now I'm noticing something, David. Right off the bat that I think we should investigate. Ooh. Ah, going with the giant syringe, are we? Yes. It's a syringe and a vial. 
Those were for my father's back pain. He had to inject it directly? Are you sure about that? Personally, I always wondered if the pain may have been caused by the fact that he's sticking a dagger-sized needle into his own back, but perhaps that is just me. He said it really helped when the pain was particularly unbearable. It was that bad, huh? Maybe I should look into using this. I'm apparently an invalid. He must have been injecting some sort of painkiller directly into his back then. Like the kind you might use on a hostage to keep them out. Hey! Yes, my father said his back pain could knock him off his feet. And it kind of did. That's probably what it was. For that matter, I mean, I bet that's related in some way. For that matter, why is it that we keep finding out about things that Phoenix and Inga have in common? Ha! Yeah, he even, he even made the parallel between her and Trucy. Yeah, you're right. I know the feeling. I've experienced some pretty severe back pain of my own. Well, we can't have you throwing your back out in court, so why don't you take a bile? Rayfa, that isn't how prescriptions work. Inga's like twice my size. That, I, that, I, that amount could kill me. What? He's not twice his size. I, I, I'm just saying he looks more like big and muscular than Phoenix does. Phoenix is not a scrawny little child. Oh, uh, no thanks. I hear your body builds up a tolerance to that sort of thing. Said to make the pain disappear. Painkiller shot. Ninja into the pocket. <laughs> Come on, Phoenix. She... She kindly offered them to you. You could just accept them, or do you not want to make Edgeworth think that you're doing something wrong? <laughs> also, I mean, isn't it nice that she just offered that? She offered something that was important to her father, that represented part of her father's private life, directly to Phoenix, to, just to be nice. I know, it's, it's these moments that made, that made me warm up to her anyway. Yeah, exactly. Same here, same here. Like her concerns about us dying to the DC Act? I thought you didn't want them. I'm going straight to a chiropractor as soon as I get home. Hey, if I ninja them, why are they still here? Shut up! All right, let's see. Day 32, kidnap Maya Faye. <laughs> How convenient! It's an actual smoking gun! This notepad must have belonged to Inga. What's he drawing? Oh, hats! Let's see. <laughs> Fittings for the hat for him. Nana, purple hat, glasses, diamond-shaped tattoo on forehead. Spiky hair, blue clothes, pink necktie. He's got a pink necktie? That's strange. These appear to be notes detailing people's most prominent characteristics. <gasps> Does he have pro Aphasia? Er, not aphasia. But... Why can I never remember the stinking name? Prosopagnosia? I think that's right. It is! It is prosopagnosia! Face blindness! Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense! I like how we both instantly thought of that. Speaking of games we're playing that have similarities to the Zero Escape series. Speaking of! I, there, there has to be, but you notice who isn't on here? His wife and daughter. Yeah. It, well, it, that may not be relevant, but... Surely he could tell them instantly. That, that's what I was saying. That's why I said it that way, is his wife and daughter, however, he doesn't need to worry about because he knows... He knows who they are. Their voice or something. Yeah, He can yeah. recognize them by their steps or something. Because, yeah. I mean, if you... if you, We're jumping... We're going out on a limb, but why else would you put this in? If you do have face blindness... That's how you identify people! You have to develop elaborate strategies to ascertain others' identities. You have to! Hey, there's even some stuff about me in here. My necktie's not pink. Yeah, it is. It is? Why would he bother doing this? Hmm, I, I'm afraid even I can't answer that. We may not be right, but it's still a pretty interesting thing to have on that notepad, huh? Whatever the reason, it's giving me a case of the heebie-jeebies. Well, the only problem is, in a mystery-style visual novel, you can only have this come up once, and then it will never survive or surprise you ever again. Hmm. It's as though he was taking down descriptions of people over the phone. That's what it reminds me of, anyway. I don't know about those two crazies out there. 
What the hell was that? They called me a crazy. What a brilliant deduction! One fitting of a chief prosecutor such as yourself. Hey, brilliant deduction. One fitting of a chief prosecutor. Well, I like such prosecutors. I happen to work with them all the time. They're kind of related to Nayuda anyway, somehow, in some manner. Like a cousin or something. I commend you. <laughs> That's high praise coming from you, your benevolence. Edgeworth's right. They do look like dictation notes. But... Why do you need to write those notes and draw a picture of Nana's hat? Because I don't that's know. what was on the page. Just like Damon's saying, why bother describing Nana, who he must have seen every day? I mean, see? That's Nana's hat right there! Yeah! Man, it must be really convenient if you do have prosopagnosia to, to live in a world where nobody appears to change their clothes. <laughs> because in video games, in video games or anime or something, that happens like all the time, and it's. I understand why I'm not criticizing it. That yeah, yeah, that's really kind of funny. But it's like, what a perfect world to live in if you can't recognize faces. This chair looks like it was modeled after Inga's suit jacket for it is some indeed. reason. It is indeed the stupidest looking chair I have ever seen. Hmm. The backrest even has those fancy buttons of his. I imagine they make the chair awfully uncomfortable to sit on. There may be a reason he has back pain. If it were that simple... I know, I know. Actually, they serve to massage the pressure points on his back. Ha! Huh. My father suffered from terrible back pain, you see. Yes, we know. Well, I don't know what order you investigated everything in. What, do you want me to redo the script in real time? Those yeah. two jokers out there occasionally get one line in advance. I wonder if it really works. Let me just sit down here and, uh... And now Phoenix is going to be sympathetic to Inga. Like, for the rest of the game. This is most likely a special ink pad for the... G I, you know how sometimes you'll be talking uh -huh. and a thought will enter your head and yeah. you can't get it out and you uh -huh. can't concentrate on anything you're saying or yes. doing yeah. and it's like you'll blank out in the middle of a conversation or uh -huh. something. Well, that had started to happen. The thought was irrelevant. It's the same type of random thought that mm -hmm. those tend to be. And I could have sworn it said juice minister. <laughs> I'm the royal juice squeezer. <laughs> the minister of juice. Who got the juice? That was for you, Billy. Thank you. No one will get that, but that's okay. It's okay. This is most likely a special ink pad for the Justice Minister's stamp. His insignia is carved big and bold right on the lid. Talk about overkill. Did you really have to mark everything he owned? Huh. That seems like it might be important. Yeah. Marking everything he owned? Yeah. By the way, do you see do you see the alcohol in the top right? No, 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 it's grape juice, Damon. You can tell because there's grapes on it. <sighs> so anyway. How did reach those? That is why I brought it up. <laughs> I mean, it's like you have to get like a claw arm, two foot long grabber to get them. Maybe there's a ladder just off the side of the screen. Yeah, we only ever look at these rooms from one angle anyway. The grape juice ladder. That's one luxurious and comfy looking bed. I've slept on nothing but hard floors since coming to crying. Can't wait to sleep in a nice soft bed again. <sighs> oh, sorry, we're in the middle of an investigation. Then take it. It's yours if you wish. What? We'll have to clean this room out anyway, now that my father's gone. Mm, now I don't want it. But. Don't you want to keep these things as a memento of your father? Well, sure, quite a lot of things, but the bed? Come on, that that's pretty weird, Bobbed Head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is pretty weird. Besides, I don't need his spirit haunting me late at night. Well, frankly, neither do I. Why do you think I don't want the bed? <laughs> what were you thinking? Do you suppose if I slept on it, I could see my father once more? It's hard to come up with a funny retort after that. Princess Rafa, I honestly don't know how to answer that. Not everything needs a comment, I guess.
It's been one day. I know. The strength of her pride and her devotion to her duty is such that she can do this well. Like, Army was like that, too. I mean, it wasn't her duty, but she didn't really have time to grieve for her father either, but she still came forward. It's impressive every time. It's impressive every time. So about his vanity. Wow, that's one gaudy sculpture. My father sculpted it himself from a block of solid gold. Well, that would explain why it doesn't have that many facial features. Excuse me, a block of solid gold? Why does it not surprise me that he was also a narcissist? <laughs> it's pretty detailed. He even included that personal stamp of his. Hey, stamp's a little loose. Really? What? What? Uh, oh! Look at that! There's a secret safe inside! Oh my! To think such a thing was here all this time! Rats! Looks like we'll need the combination to get in. Huh! How interesting. We can't open this without the combination, but I doubt Princess Rayfa would know it. Let me just start entering all their birthdays or something. Well, if we can't open it, we can't open it. For now, let's continue our investigation and come back to this dilemma later. I like this globe surrounded by a snake with on top of a turtle. His desk is crammed full of documents. And it's constantly rotating. What does that mean? <laughs> hmm. They appear to be paperwork for executions. But, but for this many cases? Indeed. Something is rotten in the kingdom of Kulain. Leave it to me to quote Shakespeare in an episode where Shakespeare was already quoted. <laughs> Don't be so meta. Hmm. This one dates back to five years ago. Something tells me he simply kept putting them off because he hated doing paperwork. I don't know about that. Yeah. Now for his hair product. What's this? Yeah, I thought it was hairspray too. Je suis la belle? I never thought I'd see this brand again. Okay. I just don't remember something that specific. I don't know what that's referring to and it makes me very sad. It's like I even forgot about his back pain, you know? It appears to be a sample of some sort of spray on hair color. Oh yeah? Color, jet black. I wonder if Inga was going gray. About that age. Here, Edgeworth. Maybe you can use it. I like my natural hair color just fine, thank you very much. As you've noticed, it is gray. Now for the footprints coming in. Hey, that is a good point. There's some muddy shoe prints here. Come to think of it. There were muddy shoe prints going Out out. there, going the other way. There's some spilled water by the entrance. Somebody must have stepped in it before coming in it here. It is extremely important to talk about this as frequently as possible, but the point is to make sure that we know about it. They're already dry. That means they're at least several hours old. Then someone must have been in here today in the early afternoon. For our servants clean this room each day. I see. Well, what about Nana? Would Nana have been the one to clean this? But where's Nana? So that means it could be older, but I mean, I doubt it. Here in Kurain, we have a saying. Leave not today's untidiness to the morrow. Hey, that's pretty good. Mine is, why clean up today what you can leave for tomorrow? <laughs> I have a that... hardworking ethic. <laughs> well, I don't see anything else here that we can really... So next we just need to talk to Rafa. But I think today's investigation has dragged on for quite some time. I mean, we're, we're heading to the last trial. We have a lot to look at and a lot to take in. And a lot to process. Yeah, a lot to process. I just admit that I am becoming more sympathetic to Inga than I was before, but just because you become more sympathetic to somebody doesn't mean that... You, 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 you excuse them or forgive them or anything? Yeah. Yeah. The sympathetic response between humans is a natural instinct. The more you find out about someone, the more sympathetic you come towards them. Yes. That's natural. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. I, I've said it plenty of times. 
the more you know about a person, well, because it came, there's like a big, a big study on this, and it's like the more you know about a person, the more em empathy you generate. Yeah. So if you want somebody to instantly be like somebody in fiction to instantly be more likable, you present their their past in a kind of natural way immediately. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the first ten minutes of Up. You know, the the, the Pixar right, movie. Right, right. And in that. You're just like, oh, that was the best opening to a movie I've seen. Like, if you're not crying, then are you human? <laughs> well, anyway, what what a bizarre turn of events that we ended this episode talking about a Disney movie. What's also interesting is that this episode has been about Inga, while the prior one was about Amara, another dead parent. Huh. Huh. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs>